Hi, I'm Iris. I'm with Dunwoody College of Technology, and I'm a math instructor. You may have watched the video that I just finished regarding circumference, and so I want to pick up from where we left off, and I want to talk to you now about area of a circle. Area of a circle actually came about with the ancients and them having to use what they knew and understood to help them develop a relationship with something that they didn't quite understand yet. They knew and understood area of a rectangle. And just to remind you about area, area of a rectangle means that I'm shading this all in and I'm looking for the space that this covers, if you will. So if you were laying, if you will, a uh, rug down in this room, I would look to measure the area. And the way we measure area of a rectangle is we measure the length, we measure the width, and then we define area with a capital A, you'll notice. So area of a rectangle is simply equal to the length times the width. And if you remember, too, in your area problems, your units of measure are always squared. Because when you have a foot times a foot, it is feet squared. When you have centimeter times a centimeter, it's centimeters squared. And square measure is actually how the ancients figured out things. They cut this up into squares, and they counted up how many squares it took to fill the area. And then eventually, we got faster and we did multiplication, which is a very fast way to add. So that might be for another video moment. But right now what I want to do is I want to show you how the ancients had to really think beyond what we feel is comfortable to start to make a relationship between what they knew and what they were trying to figure out. And that was how do we ever figure out the area of a circle, which means I would be coloring this all in, and that is area. So let me show you a nice little proof where the ancients had to go and walk beyond what was comfortable and think, if you will, outside the box. Now, if I take a circle, one thing I want you to notice is I can take something and change how it looks but not what it means to help me look at it in another way. And that's exactly what the ancients were great at. They would take and they would change the form of something, but not what it means to help them understand what they were looking at. So if I take a circle and I cut it up and just pretend everything is being cut exactly perfect, ha, huh? I'm going to cut this up into four pieces, OK? And what I want to do is I want to open it up. So what the ancients did was they said, OK, there's my circle. Let me change how this looks. So if I open this up and fan it out, don't I have something that has, if you will, four pieces? Just imagine me having a pie, cutting it into fourths, and opening it up. And I'm going to spin it over here. Now, this is what we're looking at. Now let's just talk about some of what we're looking at. The length from here to here is actually the circumference, isn't it? Look at this. If I walk around the object, I have covered, if you will, the distance around the circle, which is circumference. So from here to here is what we call circumference. And if I use radius measure, I have 2 pi r, or if you will, 2 times r being the diameter times pi is circumference. So the length, indeed, right now is 2 pi r. Now let's look at the measure from here to here. Looking back here, this is, from this to the outer edge is the radius, and if I change and rotate this, isn't this just the radius? So I'll give you a second to look at that. So I'm using circumference to help me right now, which the ancients had already put in place. I even showed you where pi came from from that last video. And now I'm using what you learned, and I'm applying it to something that we still need to figure out. Now let's just be these ancient thinkers. They're looking at this, and they're going, well, I'm sorry, that does not look like a rectangle. So let's continue to play with this a little more. Now if I take these two pieces, and I nest them in here, look at what I get. I've got the two pieces up front here, 
this piece and this piece. And now what I want to do is I want to take these two pieces and I want to fit them in here. And when I do that, I'll get an object that looks like this. It's not a rectangle yet, but it's starting to take the shape of one. Now let's just talk about what we're looking at. The measurement from here to here is what? It's half of the circumference. And half of the circumference, here's 2 pi r, that's circumference. And half of it cleans up to being pi times r. So now I just have pi times r as a length. And what's the width of this object? Isn't this radius? Now before you make assumptions and go, oh, be careful. Because really, I cannot think of this yet as length times width, because it's not really truly a rectangle yet. So then, this is what I love about those ancients, man. They were so good at thinking beyond. So the next thing they did was they said, hey, let's just cut it up a little differently. In fact, instead, of cutting it up into four pieces, the ancients went back with their knife. Got to find mine. Mine is called a marker. And they said, what about if we cut this like into really teeny little pieces? Inf now listen to my language. Infinitesimally. That means infinitely small. Really little, like slivers. But I do the same thing. I cut it up into little. In fact, these pieces are going to even get cut smaller. And so small that they are, if you will, the size of a thread or a hair. Teeny little pieces. However, the process being the same. Process is this. I take my infinitely small pieces. I open it up. The measure is the same here. I take half of them, I nest them in, I get this object, and it's going to start to look like this. When we cut the pieces, okay, cut the pieces, infinitely small, and do the same thing. What are you looking at? Let's do it. I now have something, and I, it's going to be hard to do on the board here, but I'll do my best, that's going to start to flatten out. In fact, that little curve from the one slice, the smaller and smaller and smaller I slice the pieces, starts to flatten this out. And if it was infinitely small, it becomes nearly flat. So much so that round off error becomes minimal and it allows me to develop something that actually looks like a rectangle. And look at, these are infinitely small pieces. But the same thing is true about what I just did here. I took, and now the length of this is still pi r. And the width of this object is still the radius. And so the area of a circle is equal to, and I'm just going to write it right in here. So the area of a circle is simply equal to pi r times r. And in a math book, the way you've been given area is this. And let me erase and make a little more room for us. The area of a circle is simply equal to pi times r times r, which means it's squared. So pi r squared is indeed the area of a circle. And it comes from this beautiful, clean thinking about taking something that was circular, cutting it, and changing how it looks but not what it means into something that we could relate it to, something that we understood, length times width thinking. And then 
I think we should work one of these problems. So let's do it. Let's determine the area of a circle. Now, the last circle that we worked on, we determined circumference. We had a radius of 5 feet. Let's determine the area. Now I want you to notice something. Area of a circle uses radius to determine, if you will, this space. So don't get it mixed up with circumference. Area is different. Area is where we're filling it all in. And area being, if you will, dependent on the radius. So I have to take pi, and then I'm plugging in 5 feet, and then I have to square it. Pi times 5 times 5 is 25. Feet times feet is feet squared. And like all good area problems, we always square the units of measure. And then you can do the rest. You know what pi is. It's about equal to 3.14, and then multiply it by the 25, and then your unit of measure is indeed feet, and it's squared. So I'll let you do the number crunching. All right. Enjoy.